I'll be showing you how to skyrocket the conversion rates of your WordPress e-commerce website by using a wishlist feature. Before I go any further, let me show you some massive e-com stores that you already know that use the wishlist feature and who've probably spent thousands of dollars trying to uh, implement this. And I'm going to show you step by step how you can do it in a few minutes without spending any money. So here you go, here's Amazon. As you can see, on every product page, there's an add to wish list. Let's have a look at Target. They've got something called add to list. And let's take this uh, shopping site, for example, ASOS save for later. They're just three massive examples of companies who are utilizing the wish list feature on their e-commerce sites because they know how critically important it is for a user to be able to save a product to a list, come back to it later, and then finalize their purchases. So I want you to be able to do that on your own e-com store. Okay, so to do that, what we'll be using is this plugin here, this WooCommerce wishlist. Just go down to the description of this video, click on the link, and you'll be taken to this URL. You'll see that there is a paid version, which costs $79 for a single license. However, there's also a free version, which is the one that we'll be using. Having said that, Let's just have a quick look at some of the features and I'll scroll down and run through some of them with you. Let me just find it. Here we go. Okay, so on the free version, you can select the page you want your wish list to appear on. You can select where to add your add to wish list link or button. You can show the add to cart button on the wish list page itself and a few other things. So have a look at that. However, if, you, if your e-com site is doing well and you have some money to spend, I highly recommend you do consider upgrading to the premium version because there are some really cool things you can do. And one of them is this one here. View, uh, the, yep, view popular products added to wish lists. And you can also view wish lists created by logged users. Why are these two things powerful? Because you can actually see what other people are adding to the wish lists and you can therefore structure your site around that. For example, if you see that some people are adding a particular jacket with a particular pair of shoes or jeans, then you know that you can actually use that as an upsell or cross-sell, which I actually took you through in my setting up an e-com store video. So basically you can get a lot of cool insights by doing that. But the free version works perfectly well, so if you don't want to, the free version is absolutely fine. So let's click on this link here, download the free version. Save that onto your computer somewhere where you can easily access. Okay, once that is saved, let's log into our WordPress dashboard. Go to plugins and add new. Okay, so all we want to do now is upload that plugin we just downloaded. So click on the upload button, click on browse, and then select the file we just downloaded. It's this one here, and click open. And install now. That may take a few seconds to install, so be patient. Cool. Once that's done, click on Activate. Perfect. Now you'll see this area here, YIT plugins, and you'll see a wish list area where you can actually um, configure all of, your, all of your settings. So I'll take you through that now. First box, enable all of the plugin features. Yes, we want to enable the wish list. If you want to read more documentation, check out this link here and it'll tell you much, much more. But I'll run you th through what you need to know. Okay, the default wish list title. I'll name it my wish list. 
the wishlist page. Let's keep that as wishlist. So this will be the page on your website which on which the wishlist will be visible. The position field. I like to leave it after the add to cart button. You can also select to leave it after thumbnails, after the summary or, after, or use a custom shortcode to insert the wishlist button. I think the summary is too far down the page and it's too disjointed so the best place in my opinion to have a wishlist is just after the add to cart. Redirect to cart. Do you want to redirect to the shopping cart if add to cart button is clicked on the wishlist page? Now when somebody adds something to cart on the wishlist page, I want to keep them on that page because it's always possible that they want to select more products from their wishlist to add to cart. I don't want to keep redirecting them back and forth from their shopping cart, so I will leave that unselected. Remove if added to the cart. Yes, I want to remove the product from the wishlist if it's added to cart. That's ideal user experience. The next field here, add to wishlist text. Um, I like to personalize that a little bit, add to my wishlist and the same for browse, browse my wishlist. This is obviously from a customer's point of view. Your notification if a product is already in the wishlist, you can edit that if you like. The product added notification and the add to cart text can also be customized. Now the next few fields. Um, you can show the price of each product on the wishlist, you can show the add to cart button and you can show if it's in stock or out of stock. I'll leave the date and a remove button, a second remove button off that because it will just mess things up on that page. Now the social network stuff, um, I'll deselect all of that. We do not want social, well me personally, I do not want social network sharing on my wishlist page. You definitely can keep that. and. You know what, I might just show you what that is, just so you're aware. And that is all. Click Save Changes. Now I'll just go to the site and show you how that functions. So say a customer lands on a couple of products, let's say these two. And they have a look, okay, not sure whether they want to add it to cart, add to wish list. So that's the button that appears after installing this plugin. So they can choose, okay, add to wish list. The product has been added. They can choose to browse their wish list. Okay, then say for example, they come here and they want to add this one as well. Okay, so currently they can browse the wish list through this button here. However, what they haven't got at the moment is a link in the menus to actually access their wish list directly. Say they browse around the website. How are they going to access your wish list? And that's it there. That's the page that they want to view. So what we'll do in a second is add this page to our menu. But for now I'll just show you what the options are for this actual function. So as you can see, these are the share icons, so the user can actually share their wish list with other people. I choose to disable that. You can have unit price, stock status, and a couple of other options, which are the date and a second remove button, which I have left off on purpose. Okay, so say a, cu a customer comes here onto the wish list, and they have the option of either, in this scenario, they can add this particular product directly to cart, there you go, that's been added to their shopping cart. You can see it up here. And for this product, they can't add it directly to cart because there are some options they need to choose from. So what will happen is they'll get re redirected to the product page. They can select their options and then add it to cart after that. And here's a notification notify notifying them that the product already exists. Okay. So that's how the wish list functionality works. As you can see, it it really doesn't take long. It's very simple but it's highly effective and it will increase the conversion rates of your e-com store because people will come back maybe tomorrow, the day after and visit their saved lists. So now that brings me to the next point. How are they actually going to see the lists? If they've browsed around, for example, they end up back on your homepage, how do they access? So what we're going to do is now put a link in the header area so they can easily access that. 
to do that, go back into your dashboard and go to go to appearance and then menus. You should see a wish list page available in your most recent pages for selection. So it depends which menu you want to place your new wish list link in. For example, you can place it in this main menu here or you can place it in this secondary menu. My recommendation is that you place it in the secondary menu because if you put it here, it's sort of it's taking up important real estate by putting it in this menu. But by putting it in, in this menu here, the user can easily find it, but it's out of the way. So if you wanted to put it in your primary menu, all you need to do is ensure that you are in your primary menu. Select this checkbox, Add to Menu, and then Save. Likewise, if you wanted to put in your secondary menu, that's known as the top menu in this particular theme. So let's select that. And you'll see currently there's only two things. We can add the wish list. And my preference is for it to be called my wish list and also be the third thing in the list. So it'll be contact us, my account, then my wish list. And then save when you're ready. So I'll just refresh my site. And there you go. So a user can do whatever they want. They can browse your site and then they can click on the wish list link to get a list of the products they've saved for future reference. So there you go. I really hope that's effective for you and your e-com store. And I just know from personal experience that that does increase conversion rates. If you have any questions about that, please do ask me in the comments below. And don't forget to thumbs up this video and subscribe to my channel because I'm going to be putting out more useful information to help you succeed and help your e-com site be a success. Thank you for watching.